Hi Harveys, we are here to announce the winners of the Harbinger Down Fan Art Contest. Um, before we announce the first, second, and third place prizes, which you have voted on, um, I'm going to go through and try to find three honorable mentions out of all the rest of them. And I have to say I was really impressed by all of the art that was submitted. You guys did a really great job. Um, and I thought maybe you'd like to look over my shoulder as I kind of sift through some, uh, some of the artwork and, uh, and, and, and uh, try to pick, if at all possible, there could be, you know, 20 honorable mentions. But let's see if we can figure out which three honorable mentions get mentioned honorably. All right, so I've kind of um, divided this up in between what I think are sort of like um, the logo-y kinds of uh, movie poster art and then creature design. So let's start with the creature design stuff first. Um, I thought this was pretty, pretty adorable here too. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how old some of our um, our entrants are, but um, that looks like some uh, really young people have jumped in on this too, and that's fine. This is a great one. Very professional looking. Really like that. This one made me laugh because I like the idea that a monster can transform and still have his glasses on. And I believe that is a likeness of Jason Spear, one of our executive producers. I thought that was pretty fun. There's some fun designs too. Very freaky and uh, over the top, which is completely appropriate. These are some nice designs as well. Uh, oh, he's got his name on him. David Chance Fregali. Fregale? Fregali. This one is particularly weird. That is so bizarre, huh? Uh, you can see his style. Very nice stuff, David. And then this is another very slick looking one by J.S. Candia. That's uh, a very nice looking weird bioluminescent character. Dig that a lot. Here's some other freaky, freaky looking creatures. Yeah, a lot of people, it's nice to see a lot of people uh, uh, put multiple submissions. That's pretty cool. There's a nice weird, that one's very Rob Bottin, which we always love. These, I'm not sure if this is the same artist or not, but there's a similarity in concept and execution there that is very strange, I think. This is a disturbing thing. This kind of reminds me of some of the Alien 4 clones that we did. And this one I thought was pretty... Uh, <laughs> pretty great too because I don't really know what's going on here but it looks like a giant tardigrade is talking to a human being and uh, that implies some kind of backstory which I think is, is kind of neat okay so before I pick any I'm, I'm I want to move on to these and show you these also so more logo-y stuff there's a good austere sort of jawsy like thing with something weird going on and the victim's hand coming up out of the water this is a very interesting style I thought very graphic, kind of Aubrey Beardsley sort of style, riffing on the Svet creature from the trailer. Another logo-y kind of uh, very sad, sad story there, huh? This one, oh yeah, this one we uh, we saw very early on, very uh, well executed, very nicely done. Um, here's a uh, sort of a Photoshop version of some of the stuff from the trailer. Lance smoking, that's always a good one. I always like to see that. There's a, there's, there's Lance uh, having a bad day. Oh, this one I thought was very interesting. Um, this kind of reminds me of some old pre or, or World War I era artwork where f figures form skulls and things like that. Very austere and very interesting, I think. Oh, there's the backstory to the, to the other one we just looked at. Look at that, more montage of clips from the trailer. That's pretty disturbing, isn't it? Oops, sorry. Yep, Lance peering through a porthole. Another skull-related artwork. Very much, this reminds me of the original Howard Hawks thing. James Arness coming through the door with a spin on it. Godzilla versus Harbinger. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it looks like a giant squid fighting Godzilla. Awesome. Nice artwork of um, compilation of, of the images, but but um, repainted, redrawn, really nicely done. There's a very dynamic pencil sketch of Lance in the middle of a sea of, of uh, Lovecraftian nightmares. And there again is Lance 
with his guts hanging out. Okay, I see, see, you see what I mean, right? That this is, this is very difficult to find three honorable mentions out of this pile. So we're gonna cut the camera right now while I go through and force myself to make up my mind. We'll be back in a moment. I couldn't do it. I couldn't come up with just three honorable mentions. So I've got five here. So bear with me, I'm sorry. I could have just as easily picked 10 or 20 of them. Uh, again, thank you all for your contributions. But in no particular order, here are the honorable mentions. The first one is from David Chance Fragali, Fragale. I hope I have that name right. But this one, this is just so weird to me. It's just so freaky. The gigantic weird head, I don't know. It's, it, it really it, it disturbs me and bothers me. So David Chance Fragali, good job. You are an honorable mention in the fan art HD. Okay, now here's another one that I thought was very good. J.S. Candia, right? Very slick, very professional, kind of understated in a way, which I like. It's not covered with lots of detail. A lot of times real sea creatures are just slithery and slimy, and it's got that neat looking bioluminescence. Good job, J.S. Candia. Uh, oh, okay, this is one you guys have probably seen before from Martin Schleierkamp. Schleierkamp? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Very well executed, very technical, very slick uh, illustration. I'm sure Martin's a pro. Good job, Martin. Uh, this is another one, interesting one from Shana Klebesaddle. I thought this was very interesting, very evocative, simple, and yet uh, uh, very effective. It kind of draws me in. There's not too much detail to it, but it's a very strong, powerful image, and I like the clever way she's uh, created a skull. Um, and I, I, I have a million questions about it, and that's what I like about it. Okay, and the last honorable mention goes to John Dew. I just thought this was so charming, and um, it's so colorful uh, that I think that, uh, and I like the fact that, you know, Harbinger down. That's very clever, too. So anyway, John Dew, good job. All right, as I said, those were the honorable mentions. You're all honorable mentions in my heart. So let's get to the winners. And these are the folks that you guys have voted for, uh, the top one, two, and three, and I want to show them to you now. Don't go anywhere. You still there? <clears throat> okay. So let's talk about the first winner, all right? No, 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 we'll start with the third, because that's what they usually do in beauty contests, right? The third winner is uh, Barry Stevenson. This is uh, the one that you guys picked as the number three it's, I find it a little awkward because my face is larger than Lance Henriksen's on there, and I just don't think that's right. But congratulations, third place winner, Barry Stevenson. All right, on to the, I believe they call them the runner-up. This is number two. This is from Jonathan A. La Mancha, Man of La Mancha, La Mantilla. Jonathan A. La Mancha, I believe. That's what I'm saying. Sorry, I'm butchering that. It's my Presbyterian upbringing. Um, this is a very interesting and creepy uh, illustration um, that you guys have chosen as number two. Well done and congratulations. And the big winner of the day, if you thought I butchered Jonathan's name, just wait. Number one, the fan art winner first place Marco Pelleo Morales Yanez. I think I did that pretty well. Let me try it again. Marco Pelleo Morales Yanez. Uh, this is your number one winner for the Harbinger Down Fan Art Contest. Congratulations, Marco, Jonathan, and Barry. Well done, and thank you all for participating. You're helping us make the movie a success. Thank you, Harveys.